What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, back with another video here in my private domicile. I gotta make a big announcement before I get to the topic du jour, and that is you showed up. You see, two weeks ago, I made the ominous announcement. Your boy made it. I have my own series on the History Channel called Ancient Workouts with Omar. We released the first episode, Training Like a Gladiator, taking a historical look at how these ancient warriors train and implementing modern training methodology to kind of have this harmonious coexistence between that fortitude, grit, and determination, and then the exercise signs of modern day to produce a really good workout. Anyways, we launched it. I asked you guys and said, hey, do me a favor, leave a comment on that video. Let's get a thousand comments. And you know what happened? We got to 2000. When I made the call, you answered. The latest episode now, the second episode, Vikings drops today. It's live right now. Here's what I want you to do. Do me a favor, go to that video once again. I want to see a thousand comments once again, and this time I want to see 10,000 likes. I could tell you this, that the History Channel, you know, the executives, the people upstairs, they're taking a look, it's positive signs, and if we keep moving in this general direction, big things can happen. So I want to thank you, been grinding away at that for 2021. I hope to have some big announcements. In 2022, Vikings, the episode, you're gonna learn all about Vikings, about my boy, Orm, who put 1,400 pounds on his back, Eric Helms, exercise science, talking about protein to the masses. So we're taking lifting mainstream. And once again, I get a deadlift three times body weight on the big screen. So that's what we're doing there. Go ahead, check it out. Link is down below. I want to see those 1,000 comments. I want to see the 10,000 likes. I'm going to have it just at the bottom of this video. Anyways, talking about working up to three times body weight deadlift in that video, 90% of a one rep max. 2022, I'm really saying whatever I want because I'm not beholden to anyone. I work for myself, I make these videos because I enjoy them so I can give you the hard truths. And not you specifically, but maybe the community because I think the rascals are pretty damn hip. You understand the methodology when it comes to getting stronger, when it comes to getting bigger, the big basics. But there's a divide right now, I would say, between those who know what they're doing and a lot of people that are talking online. And what is really holding back some people in the beginner and intermediate phase, they don't know what effort is. They think effort is performative. They think effort is something that's on your face, the physical exertion. So to a beginner, it's the external signs. Someone has to be bleeding out of their eyes. Like, are you training hard enough? Like, are you actually training hard enough? It's like, well, let me take a look. Is the guy bleeding out of his eyes? Is he twerking as he deadlifts? Oh, yeah. check. That is a hard set. Whereas, a truly advanced lifter knows that it's a combination. Internal assessments, so how did it feel? Like, how heavy did that weight feel? And then external assessments, they're a little, uh, assessments that are a little bit more objective. So, you know, bar speed, so measuring bar speed and some sort of uh, parameters like that. In order to assess and have an amalgam of them, how hard was that set? To phrase it another way, why is it that the world's strongest people that are drug tested, and keep in mind, I've had the fortune, the privilege of interacting with the best of the best, whether it be untested, so Andre Milanichev, shout out to my uh, man Andre, or the tested lifters in the IPF. And what you'll tend to notice, the people that are spousing, oh, like you gotta grind that shit out, you gotta go to you know RPE 10, they don't use RPE, but they say like, you gotta grind that shit out. What they were saying you should train like, and what every top lifter, powerlifters know this, so shout out to powerlifters, powerlifting coaches, strength coaches, they get it, but there's this weird middle ground, I'd say of general lifting enthusiasts where the ball gets dropped. Why is that? All these people that are saying, you need to train harder, you need to train harder. Then you look to the day-to-day -day training of a Taylor Abwitz, a world champion, a Jessica Bittner, all these people that are freakishly strong. And you could go down the list. People say like, oh, like they're they're elite, their genetics are elite. Uh, what they're doing wouldn't work for the average person. You could take a look down at the national level, then the provincial, state level, the regional level, the people that are actually getting stronger, making progress, they're actually holding reps in reserve. And more than that, it's not about making a weight look heavy. There's too much of a performative aspect online. Here's what I mean. A beginner will make a heavy weight look heavy, right? Heavy relative to themselves, whereas an expert will make a heavy weight look easy. I'll say that again because I think this is very poignant. It's important in our space in 2022. A beginner will yell, make a lot of noises. The bar speed will probably not look great. So a heavy weight for them will look heavy. Whereas someone like a tailor just go down the list. That's one example of many will make it look effortless, despite it being 98% of his one rep max, 100%. He probably couldn't have lifted five or 10 more pounds, but wow, it looks super fluid. He had 50 more pounds on the bar. 
And that is because the concentration, the arousal, we'll use that phrase, getting hyped up, getting excited for the lift, they're able to concentrate all their focus into the lift. And beginners, intermediate lifters, bleed too much of that energy. I'll never forget this. There was this kid that came to Forrest and he was going for a 225 two plate squat. That's awesome. He's 20 years old. Like, man, I've been there before and he's getting hyped up. But all those yells, I keep using that word performative, it's for other people. It's because he's scared. So he's getting hyped up. He, he's bleeding energy. And I've seen this. I've done this before, right? Uh, let's say a decade ago. He's uncertain of himself. And all that extra energy is actually making him lose the focus that's necessary, that's requisite, in order to really perform that set to the best of his ability. And so he grinded it. And to him, you know, it was a PR, uh, which was excellent for him. But that type of training where it took so much out of him and where his focus was, was essentially diverted to external, to other people around him, to like really thinking about things as opposed to, you see world champions or elite level lifters, they kind of are those silent workers. And that's what I wanna talk about, this chasm right here, how we assess effort. People think, once again, it's a facial expression or that the bar needs to slow down. I mean, even my boy, uh, the Nipples, Jeffrey Nipples, recently he posted a clip of his sumo deadlift and he asked people to rate, you know, what was the RPE? And I was there, I can tell you this, and I've trained with Jeff a bunch, that if your number assessing this set isn't for the RP meaning, or we could say reps in reserve, so like how many reps did he have left, was one or less, I think at the best possible scenario, he, you know, gets the spirit bomb, Goku style, and he's able to do one more rep, that would be a miracle. I really think he had no more reps left in the tank. So it's like a 0.5 RIR or zero RIR. But the amount of people not trying to troll that said like eight or like seven, you have three more in you, truly don't know training at that level what it feels like. Because again, I think one of the things that people struggle with, if you're a beginner and you're bench press, you're doing 135 on the bar, 185, you know, not heavyweight, heavyweight for you, but in an absolute sense, not a heavyweight. And you're doing three sets of 10 and you're grinding it away like, you're, like your arms are shaking and everything else. The total fatigue you accumulate from that set is not the same as someone who's doing 315 for 10 in an absolute sense, right? It's the same idea amongst any skill acquisition, any uh, sport, any endeavor you try and do. If you're a beginner, it'll take a lot more out of you. You're not efficient from a neurological perspective, so unable, uh, uh, able to kind of concentrate and get everything going, both kind of uh, subconsciously, so without you thinking about it, and then consciously focusing it together, that champion mindset. And I say all these things because in reality, your training will look like what I'm showing you, like the Taylor Atwoods or Jessica or any other serious lifter where day to day, you're probably working up max on the singles like to an RP7, RP8. And we could say it as a percentage because I think for some people that seems tougher. If I said, oh, work up to 90% of your one rep max for a single, right? And you're doing uh, these sets with the hope of having a few reps left in the tank. But here's the thing, you're mentally committing so much energy, the pregame, the focus, you're not, you know, on your phone, on social media, on TikTok, DMing this person, thinking about this and that. Then when you concentrate all that energy, you have an absolute work that you have to do. You have 400 pounds on the bar. I want to see five repetitions. The YOLO lifter that's talking about training hard is the person that's not necessarily as focused because they're bleeding energy everywhere. They're talking with their friends or maybe they're scared or they're making those noises. Whereas that silent hard work of this really grinding away that progress, that set's gonna look a lot easier because they're more capable to fulfill that set, the, the actual set requirement. And I think that's the big difference that for most people, your sets, 70% of your workouts or 80% of your workouts, they're challenging but definitely doable. And then that 20% where you do have to work up to something, you have to kind of summon that demon and really go there, it's more like 20% of your workouts. And that is the right balance. Whereas if you listen to the common narrative by people who aren't strong, and I'm sorry I'm saying it, or people that aren't in the strength space, because I do think it's possible, and I'm gonna steal man the argument in a second. I do think it's possible to make a progress the other way. But Unless you've been there, unless you've deadlifted the 600 pounds at, you know, let's say sub 200 pounds body weight, so like a three a times body weight deadlift, some of these things are theoretical to you until you actually uh, get after it. And I can say this because I was that person that was stuck at five something on the deadlift, at four something on the deadlift, training to failure. Every, when I say RP 10, it's an RP 11, where I failed a, a rep, I remember, and I was holding the bar for 10 seconds. So it wasn't a question of effort, it's where you're applying effort. And then when we start opening that can of worms, it's like, okay, well, how's your recovery? 
recovery. For me, I actually don't sleep the best. That's something that's holding me back. The, uh, the nutrition, your mindset. So we talked about neurological fatigue. So what you bring into the gym, are you worried about other things? Are you able to separate that? Are you able to compartmentalize? All these other factors that when people just take a look at a set and they take a, take a look at someone's face, they think they could gauge or evaluate how hard that person really is working. And that's not the best measure of effort overall. It's all these things combined. And if you're really good, a lot of your sets, despite being heavy, despite being a higher RP, should look fairly easy. Of course, you know, 600 pounds is never going to look truly easy, but easy enough. And let me steal man this argument a little bit. Let me take the other side. If you're only focused on hypertrophy, if you only have a few days a week to train, if you only have so much time, yeah, training and failure very frequently is probably for you then because it's more time efficient. But I'm going to assume for most people, you could probably train four or five times a week. You could probably train for an hour, an hour and a half, maybe some people, two hours. So you might have six to eight to 10 total training hours per week. Then you start splitting up the volume, adding a little bit more. And that's when these considerations of frequency, intensity, effort, proximity of failure, when they become important. And trust me, I've been on both sides. I've been that YOLO bro, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. And I've made more progress by being more intelligent and methodical with my training, while still knowing when to unleash the demon. So I hope this helps everyone out. This is a topic, there's so much to talk about. Consider this kind of the setup for maybe future videos. If you like this video, if you like this advice, go ahead. If you disagree, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Um, and it, it did make me think because I know I'm going to post that uh, the deadlift on the Viking episode, where, which once again, you should check out, where it was 90% on one rep max. And people be like, oh man, you could have done that for at least two more reps. Correction, I could have done that for at least three to four more reps. You know, there's a time and place where you should be exerting yourself. So thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like the damn video. Make sure right now, I want to see those 1,000 comments on that video. Top link, link in the description. I want to see those 10,000 likes. Like I said, there could be some big news in the future. Things are trending in the right direction. We're going to hit a PR there. So go ahead, help it out. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the damn video. And I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. What if I told you there was a Viking named Orm who lifted almost 1,400 pounds, put that on his back, and took three steps with it? This is Ancient Workouts with me, Omar Isaf. In each episode, we examine the culture of one ancient group of warriors and try to apply aspects of their training, nutrition, and mentality into our own exercise routines. How do you stack up against these legendary warriors? Let's find out.